Hello, and this is episode number 70 of the Silver Fox Hustle podcast. And if you don't already know, we are out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts as well. So don't forget to subscribe, uh, follow us. It's very important that you do that. And leave a comment if you want to, because I've had a couple of comments on YouTube already. So uh, that is great and happy to respond to that as well. Now, today we've got two young guns on the show on episode number 70 uh, they are playing their trade in the Singapore Premier League here in Singapore and uh, you know they've been making waves one is technically very very good on the ball and I've seen him uh, put uh, people's asses on the ground on the pitch here in Singapore after a faint uh, Hazwan sorry about that and the other one is a marauding right back or right wing back who has incidentally earned his first national call up only this week or second rather, second uh, national call-up uh, only this week and also the newly minted Young Player of the Month in the Singapore Premier League. Welcome to the Silver Fox Hustle podcast, Mr. Joel Chu and Mr. Raihan Stewart. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thanks for having us on. It's, it's a pleasure. Don't be shy, guys. Okay, you already look very shy. Now, just, to, just, just for information, right, I need to get this out to the public to the people at home listening in and watching in how do you pronounce your name joel joel yeah. chu yeah yourself my friend uh raihan raihan stewart so people listening at home and watching this as well it is joel chu not joel chu and mr raihan stewart and not ryan stewart and yours is pretty okay you know i, I can i can see why people say it's ryan right but it's raihan stewart nice now uh, just to warm up a little bit uh you two uh you guys went up to the sea games Right, and uh, just tell me about your experience there, a, a short one. Uh, we start with uh, Raihan. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was a good experience, you know, travelling to Vietnam and getting to play in front of 20,000 fans, full stadium. So uh, overall, it was a good experience to learn and improve as a player. Yeah. Obviously, the results uh, weren't the best and we would look to improve that. But uh, overall, it was a good learning experience. You, you spoke about 20,000 fans, right? Yeah. Is, is this the first time or not the first time you've played like, like under such conditions and of course under pressure as well? I think this is like the first time that I've played uh, under like around that many fans. Mm. Mm. Obviously, I've been on the bench back in the day in Tampines. I was right. in the AFC Champions League qualifiers. Okay. But I was on the bench and there was about 30,000 fans wow. in the Bali right. yep. Uh, yep. United game. So, so, so how was it? Play, this time playing? Starting games, twenty thousand fans, and I tell you what, the Vietnam, the Vietnamese fans are superb, aren't they? Mm. So how how was it? Did you feel nervous? Did you? I I enjoy playing it. It's yeah. like your dream, you know, to play yeah. in the big stage in front of all these fans. Obviously, there's a a, a bit of nerves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that comes with it. But right. um, yeah, it's it's a great experience, you know, just playing in front of the fans. Jola, how about you? How many games did you play overall in those uh, couple of games? I think two. Two, two games. And a half. How yeah. how was how was your experience like? Uh, same as Raihan, honestly, because yep. it, it was a eye opening experience. Because as this is probably not my first time playing in a twenty thousand yep. <clears throat> capacity uh, stadium, but uh, yeah, it's my first Sea Games mm. and Raihan second. Yep. So yep. for me, <clears throat> it was sorry, sorry, no, I'll be on a bad. It's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, so personally for me it was. I think it was more nerve wracking for me because it's my first yeah. major games for representing Singapore. You 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 said nerve wracking. Did yeah. you think personally? I'm not talking about a team. Mm. Personally, do you think you could have done better? Like like in terms of performance, individual performance. Yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah. I do. I think the nerves got the better on me in the first game, especially ah, okay. against Laos. Right. So, uh, I was. Th I think I was in my head too much, right. especially in that first game. Right. Uh, but definitely could have done better personally. Right. Uh, as a team, I'm sure, listen, uh, let, let's not take anything away from the fact that everyone's disappointed, even the players. The players know that, right? Uh, do you think you could have done better as a team? Like, like you know, maybe the, the first game, you think, right? Because you guys were down 2-0. But do, do you think that you could have done better? I think, um, obviously, we, can, we could do better. There's yep. always things to improve on. Yep. And there's always aspects, like when you look back at the game, like, mm. oh, we could have done this, we mm. could have done that. So, yeah, there's, uh, we could have you know, played better, maybe. So, yeah, there's always things to improve on that we can... Joel? Yeah, which sure. which game do you think that we shouldn't have drawn or we shouldn't have, you know, which, which particular game do you think? Was it the first one or was it the last one? 
I think the first one. The first one. If he <clears throat> got on on the right foot, yeah. it would have been a different right. tournament throughout. Right. So I think it was important to get off to a good start, which we sort of didn't. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Listen, let's move forward. Forget about the C game. It's gone, done, finished. Everything is done. Let's move forward. Uh, we've got better, better things to talk about. Uh, let's go back a little bit, right? How did this? Uh, how did the love for this beautiful game start? Let's start off with Joel. The one with the bad throat. <laughs> uh, my dad uh, introduced me to the game. So he played footballs on Sunday. Yeah. So I would naturally follow him and I would just kick about ever since I could walk. Yeah. Yeah. So probably at the age of three, four, I started wow. kicking okay. a ball with the uncles at the side. Right. Yeah. And and uh, I also hear that both of them, are your mom and your dad, they're, they're fans of different clubs. Yes, correct, correct. My <laughs> mom's a fan of United and my dad's a fan of Liverpool. And I don't know why normally people follow their dads, but right. I followed my mom in supporting United. Really? Yeah. So you're a United fan? Yes, correct. You must, you must be very sad. Yes, uh, I am very sad. After uh, a depressing uh, season. Uh, yes. Not only a depressing season, it's a couple of seasons. Really. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> How about uh, Ryan? Uh, yeah, so I think, you know those uh, beach like footballs yep. that are like, super light and if you kick right. them, they yep. fly around everywhere? Yep. Yeah, those, that was my first experience uh, playing with my dad. Mm. Uh, back then, I lived in Tampines, okay. uh, so we used to go under the block at the HDB and play yeah. football. Me and my brother, yep. always me and my brother together, just right. kick about. So yeah, I was just kicking that uh, ball, and it would move like Roberto Carlos, you know, when you <laughs> you kicked it. So, yeah, okay, that was my first uh, memory of football. Okay, yeah. So then, after that, you know, and my dad surprisingly never played football. Really? Yeah, never? He's, a, he's a rugby player. Ah, so, yeah. Okay. So I also played rugby a bit when I was younger. Yeah. And I think when I first played, I wanted to be a rugby player. Okay. I grew up. Yeah. yeah. Then when so I what happened? So I moved to Finland and there's no ah. rugby there. So I just play football. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. So uh, by the way, your your dad is Welsh. Mm -hmm. Your mom's Malay, right? Yeah. So do you get this uh, weird looks uh, since young? Yeah. Yeah. I, I always get weird uh, looks. <laughs> and also it's quite confusing when I explain to people where I'm from. Ah. Especially when I live overseas. They're okay. like, Wait, where are you from? Singapore, okay. Wales. Okay. And it's also a bit like... You know, I don't feel so like Singaporean and okay. at the same time, I'm not Welsh. Like yeah, to Welsh yeah. people, I'm not Welsh. But to Singaporean, I'm not so Singaporean. Who's your, who's your favourite uh, Welsh player, if you have one? Obviously, uh, Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale. He's a big player, yeah. Okay. And you are a Liverpool fan? Yes. You'll never walk alone. <sighs> yeah. Um, why do I? Why do I? <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> and by the way, you have a, 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 a player that you like. From, from Liverpool, which is not your normal average player that anyone would like, right? Yeah. Especially people growing up. Tell me, tell us. Yeah, so it's Dirk Coy. It's yep. not the obvious choice, yes. you know? So I, I think, <laughs> I first remember uh, watching like Liverpool, I think 2007, mm. like it was a Champions League, um, Champions League qualifier playoff okay. against Standard Liège and yep. Dirk Coy scored there. Yep. And he always turned up in the important games and scored a okay. goal. Okay. And he always worked hard, so I always admired his play. Right, right. And I think he's a really good player, and I always right. looked up to him as a young boy. You'll probably follow him in his uh, work rate as well. Yeah. Right. I and and I gotta say, Dirk Coy has mm -hmm. always been one of those uh, underrated players who's mm -hmm. always given his best. And uh, yeah, good, well done. How about you, my friend, Joe? Uh, mine's more mainstream as compared <laughs> mainstream, to mainstream, right? Yeah. Like so. Uh, uh, the likes of Iniesta I grew right. up watching uh, yeah. but then as I grew older I, I kind of like how Modric play a little mm. bit more because okay. he does uh, a little bit more defensively as okay. compared to Iniesta but right. he's going forward as he's probably as good okay. and I think a Ballon d'Or uh, shows that in his in an, and he's yeah. still playing right now and he's still uh, the Champions, League the Champions League final as well yeah. against uh, Rehan's uh, Liverpool yeah. Let's talk about a little bit about that. Who do you think will win? Uh, obviously, uh, uh, obviously Liverpool, but yeah, obviously do you Liverpool. think that, that Real Madrid pose a very, very big threat? No, I think, you know, look, uh, every, <laughs> if you watch the whole season, Real Madrid, you can't count them out. You yep, know? Yep, yep. Come back from games, they look out. Okay. So, yeah, it's obviously a big threat there. Okay. But, you know, obviously Liverpool all the way. We, we won't say anything about that, Joel, because we've mm. got no say in this at all, yes, you know, especially with our teams. Uh, which schools did you guys go to? Let's start with Joel. Uh, yeah, growing up, you know, which primary school uh, did you go up to? Really? Actually, from primary one to primary three, there was I was in Lakeside Primary, but there was ah. no football. Lakeside in Jurong. Yes, you correct. grew up in Jurong. Yes. Okay. I still stay in Jurong. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So primary one to primary three, I was at Lakeside. Yeah. And there was no football, okay. and so I transferred to ACS Junior. Mm. Right, yeah, right, right. So when that I was primary four. 
that was where football was and yes, and because right. my academy coach at that time from JSL mm. uh was coaching the team okay. the school team at Who, the, who's that uh coach Lawrence okay yeah is that Gavin's uh yeah, Gavin's, Gavin's dad, dad right yes, correct. how about you uh primary school before you went overseas yeah, we we'll talk I about that was only in primary school for about two years like one one and a half years so okay. P one P two right uh and I was at Tanjung Katong primary school right so yeah okay for about yeah one year. How how was uh, studies, uh, Joel, in terms of uh, results and stuff, ac- academically? I think primary school wasn't that bad. Yeah. But as you grow older, you kind of like, not say get more laid back, but I kind of <laughs> took football more seriously than yeah. studies in a sense. Yeah. So I just kind of got by in school. Yeah. Got just by? Average, <laughs> just, just an average student, you know. Okay. Not, not, not okay. A, not, yeah. Now, yours, Ryan, is... Um, it's it's a little bit special, right? Now you you talk talk about the schools that you attended. First, from eight years old, you went to Dubai. Yeah. From eight to twelve years old, you were there in Dubai because of work. Your dad. Yeah, my dad's job. So how was it there? Like like talk us through like um firstly schools. Uh, you you went to an international school. Yeah, I went to an international school there. Yeah. So I went to two different schools there. Okay. So one was a Green Community School, and another was a Dubai International Right Academy. Yeah. Yeah, and it was just um, you know it's a, it's a I say Singapore is very like the school is very stressful stressful and like so there is not the, as stressful as Singapore I'd say. not as stressful or really laid back I mean not as stressful <laughs> and like yeah a bit more laid back yeah? than Singapore system okay yeah and a, mo- a less uh, exams I'd say I see and tests, yeah. I see I see more like project based kind of stuff but and and how about sports uh, in Dubai yeah in Dubai I played. Almost all sports. Yeah. You can imagine. I played uh, cricket, uh, yeah. rugby. I played basketball for a bit for my school. Great. So like, I just played any sport. In in terms of height, were you always? Oh no, I was. I used to be the smallest guy. I was yeah? a very late. Like Joel. <laughs> yeah, I, I. I used to be uh, until I think I had a growth spurt about seventeen. Ah. So. Seventeen. Yeah, sixteen, seventeen. I had a growth spurt. Okay. Before that, I was always the shortest guy in, in the team. Right, right. Now it's it's interesting. So from eight to twelve years old, you were in Dubai, and then you went over to Finland. Yeah. From twelve to fifteen, so that is like kind of like a high school, secondary school kind of thing. Yeah. How how was school there like? Yeah, Finland was. I I mean, it's a international school, so it's yeah, the same yeah. uh, curriculum. Yeah. It was like IB, so it wasn't that big of a difference okay. coming from okay. Dubai to Finland. Yeah. And yeah, so but the the biggest difference was the weather. You know, going oh, from of course the desert to. The winter right. and everything. Right, right. So, so how was football there? I, you, you once said this that that was the place where you developed the most in terms of football. Yeah. Right. Why, why do you say so in Finland? I think it's just like a lot more people play football there. You know, it's like uh, that level is very high there. Okay. So, and when I was there, is like I got to play against like academy teams in Finland. Okay. So like, uh, it was like very high level, and all the players were high level. So it's like. Um, and they were much bigger as well. So okay. the pace was faster, the intensity was faster, and everything right. was technical as well. Right. So there, you had to like sink or swim there. Right. So right. It was like uh, very hard. Your 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 brother was there as well. Yeah, my brother was there as well, and he always played like Europe or he always played my team. So that's okay. how he always like improved a lot as well. So yeah. so I guess uh, you 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 de- develop like like you said you develop the most there and listen moving from place to place it's it's not easy, isn't it? Like like. You you talk about from Singapore first, and then you go to Dubai, and then you go, and you are always, are you always forced to change the environment one, and then friends making new friends. How was that adapting to that? I mean, uh, when I moved to du- uh, Dubai, I was very young, you know, eight yeah, years old. Yeah, so, yeah. and there was no like social media back then, so it's okay. harder okay. to keep in touch with friends from yep. Singapore. Yeah, and also my parents like took care of every mostly everything back then because I was young. Yeah, then in Finland. Uh, you know, it's it's much harder. You know, you're older. Mm. You have to make new friends in school. Yeah. And also for football, it's hard. You know, you don't you don't know nobody in the country. True. No clubs. You don't know what was True. good. What's yeah. so you have to like. I I used to email clubs and be like, oh, can I come travel? Where there in Finland? Yeah, in Finland. Wow. Okay. So, like we would uh, email clubs and see like, oh, if you can, I can come train and travel with them. Nice. And yeah. So nice, nice. and once I like got a more understanding of how the football system worked there. 
Do you do you still keep in touch with some guys from Finland? No, no, only the only the girls. To be honest, <laughs> to be honest, I'm really bad at keeping in touch with people once I leave. Like to be honest, I really? Guess, yeah, I'm probably the worst person at this. <laughs> like once I leave, I just <laughs> leave like, for good. Leave for good, and I just like, don't keep in touch. Uh, ladies, listen to that. Once he moves on, he'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, let's let's now let, let's talk about uh, football and stuff, right? Um, JSSL, right? Yeah. When did you start? At what age? Uh, actually, that was not my first academy. I actually started at Canadian Pizza Soccer School. Okay, I yeah. remember that as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. At I think it was the age of six or seven. Okay. So I was there for about a year and a half. Okay. Before. Was that under Fabio? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Yeah, Fabio, yes, right? Yes. And okay. Coach Hadzrin, which yes. is the Tanjung yep. Baga coach now. Right, right, right. So that was my first academy before moving on to JSSL yeah. at the age of, I think, eight. Did you... Uh, I'm, I'm sure, of, mm. of course, right? Yeah. What was the impact that JSSL played on, on your, your football development? Uh, probably the biggest one. Yeah? Because it taught me uh, the basics of football, yeah. right? how important the basics were, yeah. and how important what it was to master the game and play it as simple as it is because yeah. like peop- like Cruyff said uh, yeah. the hardest thing to play is playing simple football yeah. so I think just as well, the f- philosophy and the coaches there tried to instill something in us yeah. to play the game be- like more beautifully in the sense yeah Yeah. so who were the coaches that you went through? Uh, Lawrence? Lawrence uh, coach Asman, okay. uh, Akmal, yeah. Akram's uh, yeah. father. Right. Uh, Gavin did good. No, Gavin, because Gavin was still quite young. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a few years back, okay. so okay. he he wasn't really taking any of our yeah. age groups. Yep. And I was under Coach Harvey as well, which was mm. the o- which is the owner now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there were a couple of coaches in a uh, in and around we, when I was there. We we can't sp- speak about uh, JSL without talking about Ben Davies, right? You 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 played with him there, and you played with him at the NFA as well, uh, with the uh, sports school, right? Yeah. Compare him to the rest in that same cohort. Was he up there already? As in as in much better? At at the age, I think he was probably the best uh, dribbler. Yeah. The, his ball retention was very 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 good. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. If you thought uh, <laughs> anybody else in Singapore was good. At that age, he was un- yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. You, you know, we, we, we can already tell, you know, if for those of them, or for those of you guys who are listening to this who don't already know, and you, when you watch him play in the recent C game, I, I think that's, that's, uh, that, that paints a picture, right? Raihan, I like your story, right? Because you didn't go through the conventional uh, NFA, mm-hmm. sports school, and then, you know, go directly to a club or whatever. Because I like that story because... Uh, I, I think there are many uh, players out there who are like that, right? Because not all of them can go to sports school. Not all of them can go through the NFA, right? Do you think there are many players out there who are like you, who are who have been left out? I think there's probably a few, you know. Yeah. There's always a few out there that are overlooked maybe yeah. because of size or anything. Yeah. But, you know, you just have to keep believing yourself and keep working at it and then yeah. you'll get there, you know, right. if you believe in yourself. Um. You went to Hong Kong when you came back. Yeah, that that is a footballing school, right? Yeah. I mean, forget about the sports school and all, right? But that's a footballing school, yeah. right? How was that? I mean, it was obviously a big uh, culture shock coming from Finland <laughs> and going Hong Kong. So okay. but I made a lot of friends there, and you know the people were nice. And yeah, who was the coach then? Uh, coach Zai. Zai, okay, yeah, right. He was a coach. Okay. And and how how was the experience in Hong Kong? How many years? About two? No, it was only about one, one and a half years. One and a half years, yeah. yeah. So I came in quite late, sec three. Right. And then I graduated sec four. So it was a good experience. The football was good, you know. Yeah. It was like... Uh, you guys won the... the... Oh, no, we, we went to the final, but we lost the final. Two? To Tanjo Katong uh, Secondary School. Right, right. Yeah. Were you always a left-sided player? or uh, Sorry, right-sided player? Or did you play in the middle and on... So yeah, I played everywhere to be okay. honest when I was growing up. I first I first started as a striker. Okay. When I was really young. Okay. And then I played winger. And at Honka I was a left midfielder. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So back then just cut in, shoot, you know. Okay. Score a few goals. Right, right, uh, right. But yeah, then slowly I became right sided, then right back, yeah. 
you, you talk about the culture shock and all, right? Did did anyone just shout out a young mo or whatever? You, I'm sure you got that a yeah, lot. Probably, yeah. yeah? I probably got that a few times. Yeah. Do you do you find that disturbing or you just take it like ah, uh, it's, it's, it's normal? It is what it is, you know. I just I can't really uh, help it. You know, okay. It's just different. Now, uh, Joel, let's talk about the sports school and NFA, right? Uh, tell us your experience there. How was it? It, you, you were there for four years? Yes. How so, was it? Uh, sports school is a... Like, you can choose to board. That means you stay okay. in. So... You do? Can, can you choose? Yes, you can choose. Okay. But it's more preferred to stay in because okay. you have morning trainings. Yes, yes, yes. So, it starts as early as 6.30 or Then you 6. might as well board, right? Yeah, yeah. correct. So, after that, uh, I think what sports school taught you was to be independent by mm. yourself because okay. it's a boarding school. Right. And... Laundry, you have to be disciplined enough to send it yourself. Okay. Not because I know of some people that I won't name that. Okay. Don't send their laundry and it's just. Oh really? Like yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so I think it just taught me to be very in- independent in solving my own problems. Yeah. That, so, that yeah that that's the you know the the intel- intangible part and 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 what have you right? Yeah. How about the football part? What did you learn throughout that four years there? And that is also in combination with the NFA, right? Yes. Correct, okay. Correct. Right. So. so uh, last time when you got into the sports school, you automatically was in the part of the national setup. Okay. Yeah, if uh, that's that's to my understanding, yes. I think. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what what they taught me was to be like to adapt to the local game a lot more. Because okay. when I was at JSL, we normally uh, played like overseas. Yes. And, yeah, yes. So we weren't really not say close to the football scene in Singapore, but. We didn't know much, I guess, right, right. Well, personally at least. Yep. So when I was at sports school and NFA, I think it taught me a lot uh, about the local game. Right. In who, were, who were the coaches that you went through there? Uh, coach Sharin. Yep. Uh, coach Ken. Yep. Coach... Uh, I think those were the two. Coach Sharin took me for the first two years. Yeah. And the year after... Because normally our sec three... We will play in the yes B division. Yep. Then yep. sec one will play in the C division because we always play one up because yep. yep. they don't allow the sports school to send. The Let, let's talk about that, right? <laughs> there were k- kind of like a few lopsided yeah. scores uh, in the schools tournament, right? Uh, I think especially in schools tournament. In the uh, schools tournament, yeah. 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 How do you think about that? Did you ever play in those games? Like you, you whack the other teams <laughs> like. Like I don't know, fifteen zero or whatever. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been involved in that much, but <laughs> that much. Like, so how like many? Six, seven, probably okay. around there. What do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's good for like the other teams. Okay. But I mean, uh, it's because we are the elite of the elites. Yeah. In especially for sports school, yeah. like most probably right, most right. people who want to pursue a future in the sport would go to the sports school. So. Well, anyway, anyway, you had you had to as a team, you had to go out there and do what you had to do. Yes, you know, right. win games. It it doesn't matter, right? And in fact, I I spoke to Mister Sharid, and he and he said that you together with uh, Ben and Hyrule Hairi, who is playing <laughs> yes, for Gelang right now, you guys like totally murdered other teams. <laughs> You know, the I'm three of you. That, I mean, set one, we actually <laughs> lost our zonal finals to okay. Masting Sex School. Yeah. So, there are upsets. Like, yeah, I yeah. But, but, but what, was it, what he was saying is, you, you guys were like the top, the, 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 the front three who were always uh, posing problems. And he has this good thing to say about you as well. Because he says that even when you went up to play against Japanese teams, you could stand up to them, you know, and, and stuff like that. Mm. So, so that, that's, a, that's a good thing, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's very kind of you. Yeah. He, no, no. I, I, I think that's the truth, right? Yeah. Now, Raihan, you know, we, we talk about you playing for Honka and stuff like that and, and playing for the COE, te- COE teams for Warriors, Home United yeah. as well, right? Then they were called uh, Home United. Tampanese came calling, right? Oh, uh, yeah. And you, you played for their Prime League team. Yeah, that's correct. Yep, uh, the Prime League team. And then, how did you get there? And what was the experience like, you know, playing in a Prime League team and that was what, under 21 or 23 at that time? I under think, 21. 21, yeah. yeah. So how, how was that? What was the experience it like? It was a good experience because yeah. I was only 17 years yeah, old. Yeah, exactly. And it was also like a funny story how I got to, Tell us. Uh, to the Prime League team. So it was like off-season and I was like, obviously with Home United the year before, but they hadn't started training yet. So I was doing like my own fitness training at the running track and... Tampines used to train at Jurong West Stadium back in the day, even though they're Tampines. Yes, yes, correct. So uh, I was doing training there. Then um, I saw the Prime League coach and I was like, oh, can I come trial? Who was that? Um, it was the assistant coach. It was uh, 
I know it's not assistant coach. It was like the assistant, I think first team coach. Yeah. I don't know if you have. Was it Herman? I think. think Herman Jailani. Yeah. I yeah. Think yeah. He was at Tampines back then. Okay. And I think he gave me the contact of the prime league uh, okay. assistant coach, right. and he's like, contact him, and you'll be able to train. So yeah, I I, I went and trained there. And yeah, it was a good. I was seventeen, and a lot of the players were twenty, twenty-one. So right. it's good to play against older players, and right. that's how you improve. You know, play against better players. I I I like you because you're not shy. Eh? You just just went up to anybody and say, hey, "Can I try?" Yeah, I, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I'm not afraid to 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 like email coaches, message them, WhatsApp them, ask for their contact. So yeah, you know, for football, I'll do it. I'll do it all. <laughs> Listen, this is a this is a good 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 uh part. You you know why? There's there's two things I picked up. Right, number one, as a seventeen-year-old, doing your own training. Doing okay. your own running, no, no, seriously. I, I gotta, I gotta say this. Those who are listening in, those who are you know watching this as well, you don't get that a lot. You know, on their own, maybe mm-hmm. off season doing that. That is the way to go, anyway, right? So that that's one. The other thing is the not shy part, like I mean, it's it's great. No, no, seriously, it's great. You know, if you can't, s- sometimes, sometimes, my friends, you gotta help yeah, yourself. Right. You gotta go out yeah. there and do whatever you need necessary to do it, right? Yeah. So, Rahan, well done, man. So. So having gotten into the team, how was that? How was the experience like? It was, uh, <laughs> it's a it's a big difference between under 17s and then going to prime league. It's like obviously a big jump. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was a good experience. I got to play. Uh, you know, Joel's team I think was playing yeah. in the prime league as well, the NFA. Yes. They, okay. They play like up a yeah. few years, so yeah. it's like it's a good standard and great. Of 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 course, there were like SPL uh, mm. S league players. Would yeah. like come down and play as well, yeah. Because you're allowed a few overage players, right, right. So you could like test yourself with there, and that was also my first uh, experience, you know, training with a S League side. So I got called up a few times to nice. come to train. Nice. So it was a very good experience, and I got to learn a lot there. Yeah. Uh, Joel, you you won the Peter Lim Scholarship Award? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. you were on a scholarship, yes, a Peter correct. Lim, and and you won the Dola Kasim Award. Yes, correct. Yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah. What was uh, the 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 experience like? I think you went up to Valentia as well. Yeah, uh, the experience was uh, eye opening one because like I think it was very hard to adapt to the weather. Ah, uh, okay. Because in Valentia, I think it was like minus two degrees. How long were you there for? I was there for about a week or so. Okay. Yeah, I think about ten days. Yep. Yeah. How was so, it? Yeah, it was. It was good. It was good. You get You got to meet uh, Mr. Peter Lim as well. No? No. no, no, never. No, no, I didn't. Never, yeah. never was inside. Yeah, never like, was inside. Right. Yeah. So, so was that training and training matches or? Yes, both actually. Okay. So, so we actually supposed to have two we, uh, friendly matches over there. I think okay. one against the Hong Kong Valencia team that they sent for uh, training as well. Like, yeah, yeah. But that match got cancelled because of the weather. Okay. Yeah. So we played an international team that was there for their training camp as okay. well. Okay. So yeah, we actually won one nil. So. Tell me what's the difference between players at your age, at at that age. What what what? Uh, how old were you there? Then, it was sixteen, seventeen. Okay, wait, so you went up there, and they were sixteen year olds or seventeen yeah, years old. Correct. What was the difference in terms of playing wise, football wise? I think they were a lot sharper. Yeah. Uh, technically, you can see that they are a lot better. Okay. Their first touch. Their uh, f- uh, physicality part. Uh. I would say they are much taller than us. Okay. In in but physically, I wouldn't say they are built very big, especially at that age. Okay. Yet, so I think they were just a lot taller. Okay. In a sense, yeah. Now, listen. While while doing research, I I got to know that you had a offer from Wang Tong. Oh yes. yes. When was that? <laughs> that was in twenty, twenty fifth, twenty end of starting of twenty sixteen. To play for their uh youth side first. Yeah. Right. Who who approached you? Uh, my mom actually was talking to a friend of hers, okay. and her friend had some contacts, and okay. Montong was interested to bring me over there for a two week trial. Did you go? No, I didn't. Why? Why? What happened? Because uh, if I went for the two week trial and they as wanted me to stay, I would have to not take my O levels that year. So okay. So school school came first. Uh, in the sense, I think my mom wanted me to have right. a more right. s- uh secure, uh, how to say, academic profile. Let let le- let me ask Ryan this: Would you have gone? To be honest, I probably would have like begged my mom like, please just let me go. She would yeah? probably have the same thought, you know, like at least get your O levels, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah, she's uh, she always like at least have something yeah. there. But I probably would have been like, please, mom, let me go. Do you, looking back, what uh, how probably should have went. Yeah, yeah, probably should have went. Really? Yeah, it's kind of 
something that I regretted not doing. Oh, seriously? Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Now, let's let's move on and talk about professional football. I think that that's what we all are, or you both of you are at the present moment, right? Now, uh, Raihan, Tampanese S League team in 2018 because you got the the so called promotion from mm. Prime League to. Were you the only player from that Prime League team to go up, or? I think there was uh one or two other players, yeah. but there was also like a few NFA players that right, right, came right. to Tampanese. How was how was that uh, experience like? That was good experience. I think the the coach at the time, uh, Jurgen, he. The trainings were very intense, yeah. and also Gavin was an uh, assistant, okay. so okay. also a lot of ta- tactical stuff, technical stuff. Right. So it was a very good experience, and you know you got to train with experienced players like Daniel Bennett was there, uh, Farah yeah. was there, so the Cairo Amri was there, yeah. so they were all very good players, uh, Singapore internationals. What was training like? Was it hard, as in yeah. real physical? I think we used to do double sessions a lot back okay. then because it was like the German coach liked to do that. Right, right, right. We would do double sessions, and then. I remember we always used to play uh, small sided games. Mm. I think five v five, six v six, and it was very competitive. Mm. Everybody wanted to win. Yeah, you know, even yeah, it was a very good experience, and I learned a lot there. And and obviously, it's very difficult to break into the team. Do did you think at that time you deserve probably maybe an, I don't know ten minutes or, or so in a game, or or did you think that you could have played one or two games? Or uh, obviously, I felt I could have played. Right. I don't know, like the coaches obviously had other ideas. Yep, yep, but yep. I felt I was like uh, good enough to play. Yep. But I obviously I didn't get the chance, right. and uh, you know it's the coach's decision at the end yep, of the day. Yep, yep. But you you know at, at that age as well, you going up. It's it's a big gap. You know the mm-hmm. gap is big, and you know it was it was a, a great experience as well for you. Now Joe, Tampanese in two thousand nineteen, right? Yes, correct. What was that experience like? <laughs> uh, I. I was that your was, first year playing in a in a in SBL? Yeah. Yes, that right. was my first. That was my debut season. Yeah. How how was that? I think at the start I was, uh, try to find my feet. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't really, I didn't really know of the tempo and how, uh, tough it would have been yeah. to cope in the SBL, especially moving from just like age groups. Yeah. In the year before. How many games did you play? A lot. I think just a handful in yeah. my first season. Yeah. Because. Do you remember your first game? Yes, the first game was against Haugang at Jalan Besar. How was it? I, uh, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think I had a great game. Yeah. If I'm being honest. Yeah. Because uh, it was my first game. Tell me I what's think. your what what's you, I asked uh, Raihan just now about his main role in terms of position. Yeah. Sorry, position. Right. How about you? What is your to you yourself? Yeah. What is your position? Position. Your best position. My best position. I would mm. think is more of like a eight or a ten. Right. Yeah. So right. the creative mind in the team. Right. So the helping the team build okay. up and link. Right. Yeah. And uh, who was that? Who was the coach at that time? Two thousand nineteen. Uh, I believe it was Gavin. Gavin. Yeah. 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 So Gavin approached me after the end of mm. twenty eighteen when I was finishing my NFA. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Who and and you you learned a lot as well. I think that's yeah. that's the most important the part most, as well. I learned the intensity and. Especially, that was the year of, I think, of adaptation to right. the whole league itself. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, that year, I think that's where I grew a lot. Uh, Ryan, you had bad news, right, at the end of 2018. Yeah. They didn't renew your contract. Yeah. And and you went to Warriors. Yeah. How did that move come about? So You called them up. <laughs> I, like, again, yeah, I messaged coaches. <laughs> I think I got, like, uh, Coach Marco from Ballester. Okay. So, I got his contact and I messaged him. And I was going to have a trial... With yeah. Ballester, okay. I think I messaged Geylang right. as well, Coach No. Yeah. And I think they said their squad was full. So right, then, right. Uh, it was a Tamasic uh, poly friendly against Warriors. Okay. And then I played quite well, I felt, yeah. that game. And then at the end of the game, I went up to like shake hands with... Uh, <laughs> On with, purpose, right? Yeah, I just went up to shake hands <laughs> with um, Paul Paul Po. He, he okay. was a GM at Warriors. And then he was like, oh, what are you doing next season? And I said, I didn't have a club at the moment. And he was like, "Oh, come, come down to Warriors. We're interested in, yeah, yeah. in you." And that's how I came down and then trained and. Yeah, listen, that was, uh, and I totally remember this as well, right? Because I was, uh, I was doing commentary and stuff, and that was a year where I thought you were, you. It was a breakout season, mm-hmm. basically, right? In terms of the 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 S League or SPL, it it was a breakout season. You had a brilliant season. You played in all but two, uh, yeah. league matches, and you played and played all the way to the. Cup final mm. where you played against Joel's team in which you lost. Sorry, Ryan, right. in which Joel scored as well, yeah. a brilliant goal as well, <laughs> right? Uh, 
you know, so so that was did did that year itself cement the place in your head saying that you know this is the way to go. I I want to be a professional footballer. I, I you know, for the long term at least. I always want to be honest. Yeah. I always want to be a professional right. footballer. Right. And I think the first year at Tampines, even though I didn't play, yeah, I knew I was good enough to play yeah. at that level. Like yeah. I can see that I was good enough. Right. So then I just knew I needed to like get okay. the chance to to show that I could do it. Right. So then obviously Warriors they gave me the opportunity, and I think I. I proved to like everybody that I could play that level. I I, I remember one of the games at uh, I think it was during I think was it the semi finals. It was a high scoring game, or five oh, four against Brunei, Brunei, was it? Yeah, I think uh, so. At yeah. Jurong East Stadium, right? Yeah. Uh, I did that game. I co- I actually yeah. commentated that game. That was like a crazy game, and it was a superb game. You know, actually to commentate yeah. and to watch as yeah. well. And what what do you think was the secret to Warriors that season? And forget about financial uh, stuff. I think it just uh, the group of players like. We were very uh, quite tight knit, you know, okay. and like we, we were just like we kind of had that attitude like, oh, who cares about like everything okay. outside? We yeah. just right. go in there and play right. football, and we we do it for, you know, like we we go out there and just give our best. Also, it helps, you know, having Jonathan Behe up front who can like yeah. sometimes pull like insane things yeah. and score insane goals. Yeah, we also had like Gabriel Quack. Yes, 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 yes. Insane that season on right. fire. Right. So yeah, Sahil as well. Yeah, Sahil he scored. scored bangers. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, we remember. had a very good team to be honest. Yeah, it just there was a a lot of issues obviously yeah. outside the. Field. Were you, were you sad at the end of the season when things went downhill? Like in, and and it, obviously it wasn't nothing nothing to do with the players, right? Yeah. Were you like? <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't that sad to be honest. Okay. Like I know I was I, I to be honest I didn't get paid for like the last four or five months of <sighs> that that season and I knew it affected a lot of the yeah. the, the senior players because you know they have bills of to course, pay. Yeah. And families to feed. So for me, I'm still living with my parents. Yeah. It didn't really affect me that hard. Yeah. I would just have to not spend so much money. Right, right. But yeah, I think um, yeah, I wasn't that sad because for me, I had a really good season. So I was happy that I yeah, played yeah, well yeah. and I got the opportunity to play. He was sad also because you're gonna pick up your phone and you're gonna call the next coach, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Joel. And and Ryan, this season, right? I mean, let, let let's move on a little bit and speak about the young lions, right? And and obviously, you serving NS. Are you are you done with NS? No, no, I'm, I'm done. done. You yeah. done? Already, yeah. Already? Yes. Uh, just in uh, three weeks ago, I already. So so are you guys, are you staying with lions or what? What's the deal like for you? Um, obviously, I want to go overseas. Right you know? after this. But uh, yeah, we have to wait and see. We're, nothing concrete yet. But but this the this you will stay with the young lions till the end of the season. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, well, this 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 yeah, is correct. good news that I'm waiting to hear as well. Yeah. Joel, you are ORDing soon or what? Uh, four more months. <laughs> but you gotta go back. Be- yes. To tell me. Okay. Anyway, wh- whatever it is. Uh, good luck for the rest of the Young Lions uh yes. season. But let's talk about Young Lions, right? And and again, I commented on quite quite a few this season as well. Now listen, I I think you guys have a good team. You, you you play very well in terms of in, in spurts during a game. You are not consistent throughout a game, even throughout a ninety minute game, right? You you are, and obviously we get that with young players. What do you think about the the, the season so far, uh, Joel? We start with you. I think it has been a a season full of uh, I wouldn't say like uh, I say defining moments. Right. So like a lot of games we uh, we were, we lost by one nil except for Elbrick. Yes. Yeah, yes. So we the lost first by game. One goal, yeah. yeah a lot of the games so I think a little bit of luck and a little bit of uh, quality up front like taking our chances yeah. uh, would have been a much different season as to what we are mm. going through now but the way we are playing is uh, I mean it's a positive sign of what is to come for the rest of the season I think right? yeah. yeah I think we've you know yeah we've played well in patches and obviously you know if we could just do that for 90 minutes we'd be like uh, yeah, uh, winning a lot of more games Right. Yeah, I think it's been overall a good uh, season so far, but we just have to uh, ch- get that, uh, change our good performances to good results as well. Yep. Yeah. And and uh, you guys are actually the senior players there, right? Yeah. So, so the, you know, with, with experience playing in the league and, and what have you, right? What have you brought to the table? What have you brought to the Young Lions team? Do you, do you, are, are you the leaders on the, on the pitch and off the pitch as well? Uh, I mean, I try to be uh, quite vocal, you know, try yep. to rally the boys. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Joe? <laughs> it must have, must have been some funny, funny stuff try going on. Try to, in the you room. know, um, be like uh, kind of a 
leadership figure out there. Yeah. Obviously, we have Jacob, who's yeah. our captain, but yep. he got injured. So, yeah, I tried to, you know, always, like, work hard and yeah. push the boys to work hard as well. Yeah. Joe? So, uh, I think I would just try to help the younger ones in adapting to the game. Because I know, it's, I know yeah. how it's like being a younger boy yeah. uh, coming into the league. Yeah. And so, I think... Especially during training, just try to help the young ones as much as possible. And I, I always wanted to ask this, especially to the young Lions players, you know, and mentally especially, because you're playing, obviously, you're, you're taking that step up in terms of age-wise and experience and whatever you, right? And obviously, you're going to lose games. Obviously, you're going to lose games. You know, nobody's going to say that the young Lions are going to win the league, right? That, that's, that's Take that out of the picture, right? And this, this is a, a question in terms of the mental part. Do you guys feel that after losing so many games, you just, you know, it, it gets to you? Does it Does it get to you? Um, I would say, obviously, we don't like to losing. Yep. We want to win every game. But I think we also have to understand that, you know, we're young players and we're there to improve and to get to that pro level so yep. that we can uh, play professional football in right. Singapore overseas. Right. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a quote from Arsene Wenger. Yeah. I think it's like, you know, uh, the risk of like playing a twenty-year-old centre back is you're gonna yeah. uh, lose like ten yeah. points a season. Right. So it's like, or, or you can play a twenty-eight-year-old centre back and you won't lose as many games, but he's not as talented. Yeah. So obviously, we're a squad full of youngsters, so we're gonna make more mistakes. It's gonna cost right. us the games. Right. But overall, we're gonna learn from this and we're gonna improve a lot more. Right. Yeah. I I like that because I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> Joel, how about you? Uh. <laughs> Does it get to your head personally? No, let's forget about the, the team structure because yeah. Raihan just gave us an answer from yeah. like like a politician, you know. <laughs> Individually, for you personally, do you think that, you know, I, I mean, especially after a game? I mean, nobody likes losing. Yeah. Especially, uh, especially as you said, we are yeah. like, there's more senior yeah. players in the squad. Right. So, uh, our goals are probably a, a bit more different from the rest of the squad. Okay, interesting. So, I think... We will want to win as much as possible, right, but right. as Rahan said, we we are uh, football is a team sport, yeah. so we have to play together as a team. So we win together and lose together. So right, right. Yeah. Rahan, your 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 call up to the national team. Let's talk about that. How how was it? How what was the feeling like? I mean, it's uh, <laughs> obviously very happy. You know. What were you doing when you got the call up? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I. Or when you were informed, rather. Yeah, I was just like at home. You yeah. know, I already there was nothing to do. I was <laughs> chilling at home, okay. and then I find out the news that I had been called up. So it was a good thing. And then also, I coach Nazri at the, one of the trainings at while he okay. like pulled me aside and yeah. said like, you know, I've been like he told me in person that I've been called up. So okay. it was a, it was good. I was very happy to be called up. And also, even though it's my second call up, this is the first chance I can get to get a cap. Yeah, yeah. Because the last call up was just a training cap. Right, right, yeah. right. So it was uh, obviously a big moment for me. Yeah. It's like a uh, dream come true. You know, you always dream to play for a national team. Who was the first person you told this to? Your call up? <laughs> oh, I just uh, messaged my family group chat. You right. know. You sure? Yeah, I always <laughs> tell my family everything <laughs> first. Nice, nice. So that's how the coach. Yeah. <laughs> Joel, <laughs> how about you? You 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 think you're gonna get one soon? Uh, a senior one? Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah? Uh, I think my performances in the league uh, has uh, said that I. Yeah. Uh, Knocking yeah, on the door. yeah, knocking on the door. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. keep keep on knocking, right? Mm. Keep on knocking. That's 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 the, the, that's the best we can do, right? Or you you guys can do your personal goals for this one, this this particular call up, because you've got your training stint mm -hmm. and then the the qualifiers, right? Yeah. What your personal goal? Forget about the team, your personal goals. Obviously, I would like to make my first cap. Yeah. And uh, play well, and hopefully, like I can cement my uh, place in the squad. You know, like yeah. be cement that like right back position and yeah. be that. Yeah, so that would be a personal goal. Right. Obviously, we want to qualify for AFC. Who are you fighting with? Uh, Lit uh, not literally, but right back. I think there's uh, Nazru at okay. the moment. Me and Nazru, I think, right. are the only right backs yeah. at the moment. Yeah. I, I have a, I have a feeling you're gonna get your first cap soon, man. Very, very soon. Mm -hmm. All right. Good luck with that. That's that's brilliant. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, some some personal stuff and uh, your opinions, right? Joel, your stature, you, you that your 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 build. Mm. Right? You're not the biggest of players. Okay. Do you get this a lot from coaches before? Not now, maybe, right? L last time, like, like yeah, you're too small, you, you know, out you go. You know, that, 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 that kind of thing. Do you get that vibes uh, before? Yeah, for sure. I think I've been uh, not on the sidelines because 
I think mainly because of my size. Yeah. If I don't think it's due to my playing abilities or my right, technical right. abilities. So right. it kind of gets di- disheartening to yeah. a point. But uh, all you can do is just to prove those people when you ever you get the chance. Like for mm. example, someone's injured or someone couldn't make make a game. Yeah. So whenever you play, you just have to prove that. Sure, I might I might be small, but I can play. Yeah. yeah. What do you say to these people who say that you know, as especially those who before right to say that you are you can't play, but now you are playing the young, young lions and you played for Tampines, scored some brilliant goals, got people on their asses on the, on the pitch, right? Well, what do you say to these people? Because, you know, you talk about the best players in the world, you know, people like Iniesta yeah. and Xavi Hernandez and yeah. all these players, they're they not the biggest in the world, right? Yeah. So what do you say to these people? I would say, uh, first of all, like thank you because it fuels me, you know, uh, like trying to prove people wrong at time and time again. Because it's been the same prob not say problem, but the same views people have on me. Because I would be too small to play, not physical enough. Yeah, so it's just a thank you. Because that's what keeps me going. That's yeah. a that's a great way to put it, right? And I, I didn't expect that answer. Thank you. Mm. Well done. Great, great job. Uh, Raihan, you are naturally fit. Are you naturally fit, or do you have to work a lot on it? Because I've I've seen you go right down the right hand side. I, you probably can go on for ninety, hundred and thirty minutes plus extra time plus penalty kicks plus everything, right? Well, do are you naturally fit, or do you? I, I think it's a mixture of like working hard and also being a bit fit. You yeah. Because I always, you know, as I say, I do off season. I yeah. do runs. I you do, still do, right? Yeah, I, I I try to get in the runs and yeah. do all this kind of stuff. But I know it's gonna help me, uh, in the long run being fit and yeah I think it's a mixture you know yeah. I think my dad's also quite a fit person so maybe I get some gen- genetics right 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 so Great. who's the better player you or your my brother? brother I say it myself obviously but right? we have to see yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody's gonna have their own opinion Joel you're quite a gamer right I heard you, uh, you've, you're a gamer uh, and you are like like t- tell us your story how do you get to start playing in, in, in like games and, and stuff like that computer games there is I, uh, I, so I got my first no actually I, I played with my cousins on the Xbox yeah, the, yep. the, the, the first one the right. first generation okay. one, yeah. so and I we played it was what Pro Evolution back then okay. so I think it was Pro Evolution like 2007 six. do you play right? <laughs> I'm not that big of a gamer to okay. be honest okay. I'm quite bad yeah. <laughs> so ever since then I think I got not say addicted, but I enjoyed playing anything okay. that was related to football. Right, so, right, right. Uh, That's how it got started. Yeah. So I asked my mom whether I could get my first Xbox, and it took like a couple of years to actually convince her to get me one. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, when I started playing, and I started playing with my friends, I would not say always win, but most of the time I would win. Mm. So from then I would join like local tournaments, like the posters right. they put up. Right. And yeah. So from then, that's when I started. Oh. So, so so do you think you can be a pro gamer? Uh, you can, right? Don't be humble. Uh, I wouldn't say so, uh, right? Really, because uh, I've I've been in an organization for uh, playing FIFA. So okay. Uh, there are other players there who are like a level or two, like more right. consistent and more. Like shows more quality than. I I want to ask you this, right? Is gaming sports? I would. I would think so. I would think so. It is? I would think so. <laughs> right, what do you say? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a gamer, but I don't think it's sports. You know, <laughs> like, personally. But, yeah, I mean, every... Yeah, yeah. I, want, I wanted to answer from somebody, you know, to, to maybe say that no, it's not it's sports. Like, it's like saying chess is sports or something. <laughs> like, I, okay, I will say it, right? If you guys don't want to put your head on a book, I will say it. I, I don't think it's sports, right? Okay, never mind. Let's move on. Right? Joe is getting angry, really. <laughs> uh, now, listen. Let's talk a little bit about parents, right? Your, the, the, the role that they've got to play. Because I spoke to Sharin, mm. and, and he said that your parents were very supportive, you know, not without going, without going overboard and mm. stuff like that, right? right. How, how big are they in, or have they been in your career they're, so far they're probably the the most influential and yeah. biggest influence in my footballing career so far yeah. like anything I need or anything <laughs> I have to get done they will they will assist me mm. and help me yeah. and like it's for example the Muan Tong she my mom didn't have to go through all the troubles to help me yeah. get arranged a stint mm. and yeah so I think my parents are just the 
biggest supporters. Like every trip we went in during uh, NFA or JSL, they they would be there. Yeah. Alright, nice. Yeah. How about so, you, Brian? Yeah, I, I I agree with Joel. Like my parents are always supportive, and I think they would have been supportive like whatever I chose to pursue. You yeah, know, yeah. not just football. They didn't push me into football. They, you know, like. Some parents I see like they try and like push their kids to do football and like yeah. go do football, but for me they were just like you do what you want to do and like we'll support you. Right. And obviously football was the one for me. Yeah. And yeah, they used to uh, drive me to to training, drive matches, especially in Finland, mm. to drive long distances. Yep, they would yep. be there for me and drive me. So yeah, they were a big influence and always like the my number one supporters. But also they. They're like my dad can be my like harshest critic. Yeah. After every game, he's like, "You need to do this to improve. You need to do this." Sometimes yeah. we argue all the time, and I'm like, "You never played football. How would you know?" But <laughs> he's always there. Okay. Me, you need to improve this after right. games. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Any plans to further your studies, Joe? Uh yes. You got a got, got a place? Yeah, I haven't haven't got a place, right. but I'm planning to apply soon. How about you? Um, of, football I mean, first, yeah. I want to do football first, but at the same time, I, I, I'm thinking of like maybe pursuing like something online, okay, or like something part time in okay. future maybe. Now, do you guys consider yourselves as role models, Joe? Joe, me, yeah. Uh, do you consider yourself as a role model? I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Why? Uh, Why not? I would think like I have a presence on social media now. Yeah. Uh, more people yep. look at my profile. Okay. And so I would be more careful as to what I'm posting on there. Okay. Yeah. In okay. that sense. I, but you yeah. don't see yourself as a role model, but you know that you got to control yourself and yes. stuff like that. How about you, Ryan? Yeah. Same. I wouldn't consider myself a role model to like, but I think like a lot of people look at you because especially now you're like a Singapore footballer. National uh, like it's you go see games or national two yeah. three. There's more eyes on you. Yeah. So like people will look up to you and be like, oh, this is a footballer. Kids will especially kids, you know, mm. that want to pursue football. They'll look up to you. So, yeah. I think, so yeah. do you? So do you guys use your social media accounts uh, wisely? Do you do that because you know that, you know, they are looking, they are watching, right? Yeah, definitely. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't want to portray ourselves in a bad light to yeah. aspiring people that are that wants to. Not be like us, but want to be a professional footballer yeah. in the yeah. future. I think I think it's very important in this day and age, right? With the phones out every yeah. single time, you yeah. never know what you do, right? So, so take care of yourselves, guys. Quick fire round before we go. All right, you got to answer quickly, as fast as possible, hopefully, <laughs> and uh, we'll see how it goes, right? Ready? Yeah. Wait, how will it go? So you just uh, no, no. I will. I will point to okay. to who to who will answer. Right? Any, anyways, some questions both of you have to answer, right? Your pre-match meal and drink. Your best, not not ones that have been arranged for you, but what do you like as a pre-match meal? Uh, I pre-match meal as in a full meal. Yeah, yeah. Anything, anything can be anything. I I I would normally have a hundred plus and a Kinder Bueno before a game. Uh, yeah, right. Like when we're in the changing room, I would get one. Ah, okay. Bar of Kinder Bueno and uh, orange hundred plus. Okay, something we didn't know. Yeah. How about um, you? The pre-match meal, like a few hours before yeah, the game. Yeah. Pasta. Okay. Probably like some chicken pasta. Okay. And also pre-match drink, uh, coconut. Coconut, yeah. Coconut water, yeah. Coconut water. The UF. Uh, I usually you... s- try and get the fresh one. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Nice. Nice. Your best mate in football. Probably my brother. I say. Okay. Harris, yeah. Best mate in football. I, I don't have one. I don't have one spe- specific one. Well, he's, he's sitting on the fence. Just name one. The best. Just name one. Yeah. Just name one. Anyone. Anyone. That f- the first one that comes to your mind. Uh. <laughs> Jacob Marler. Jacob Marler. The best dressed teammate. Best dressed teammate. Uh, I'll go Jacob. I'll go Jacob Muller. Jacob Muller. Why? Yeah. What does he wear? I think like he wears simple fits, so it's not so extravagant or anything, okay. but just nicely well put. Joe, yeah. best dressed teammate. He's uh, he's thinking hard now. Karin Nadim. Karin Nadim. Why? Uh, always with his slick hair and his okay. long jeans and like. Okay. Something. Joe, worst dressed teammate. Ryan Stewart. Why? <laughs> I don't know. He has some weird fits when he yeah, comes yeah. to training. I don't know why he's thinking. Yeah, I think I wouldn't say I'm the worst. I just say my fashion sense is, you know, okay. different wavelengths. Okay, wavelength. how about you? What in your eyes? Worst dress. I have to think. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any like bad yeah? dress. So maybe yeah. myself. You know? <laughs> some wow. of the fits. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Now, uh, which is the most difficult opponent you have faced? Not not in terms of a team, but a direct opponent, a player that you have faced before. Direct. Yeah, most difficult. I'll say Shadan. Shadan, yeah. why? Uh, just marking him or have like having to always keep an eye on it right. for him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. I would go uh, Jordan Webb or uh, Megumi. 
Okay. Mm. Okay. John Webb, we know why, right? Because he's he's very he's just uh, super fast. You know? Okay. Okay. Well done. What do you think is Raihan's weakness? Really? Football. Football weakness. Uh, emotions. Emotions. Yeah. He's, I I think his EQ is a bit <laughs> all over the place sometimes. <laughs> EQ. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raihan, what is his biggest weakness? Uh, you know, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, I think no weakness. <laughs> just, just seriously, just say. It, just say. It. Uh, just probably say it. like size, ah, uh, like yeah. it's a. Okay. Yeah, you you think that that could be a weakness as I well? I mean, not a weakness, but it's like something that's like. Now I want to go back to these emotions, but what in terms of what, like like emotions with referees, with yeah, yeah, like ah. once he starts getting into it, right? Like, whoever nobody can talk him out of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Nice, nice. Uh, tell me something about Ryan that we all don't know. Don't know. Yeah, something that he does in a dressing room, maybe yeah, I don't know. Roommate, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're messy. Messy. He's very yeah. messy. Like like sloppy. Like sloppy. Like one lump of clothes just there. Ah, so he's the one. One of those who never send his uh, clothes for. No, no, no. He does. He does. He does. He does. <laughs> he's not that bad. Not that. How about Joel? Anything, Joel? Uh, um, <laughs> something that nobody knows. I'm trying yeah. to think. <laughs> It's quite tough. Uh, Anything. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, nothing no? or anything. Okay, okay. Everybody knows everything. He's famous. Okay, you know? okay. What the, the biggest influence so far in your career, so far. Uh, my dad. Your dad. Mm. How about you? Yeah, I'd say my parents. You know, they. Yeah, okay. yeah they influence me a lot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next one. Someone you want to meet but have not met yet. Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi. Yeah. Okay, Ronaldo. <laughs> Which one? Yeah, uh, Cristiano. Cristiano. So, so, so you like uh, Ronaldo? Yeah. And you like uh, Messi? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you were not a footballer, what would you be, or who would you be? Who would I? Be? Uh, or what would you be? Uh, I think something along the lines of sports. Yeah, I, like I what? Like, I like being like maybe an analysis. Oh, and 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 analyst, analyst a, fo- yes, a football yes, analyst. Yes, yes, like correct. what? Like look at stats and stuff. No, like look at. How a team should okay play yeah. How about you? Yeah, I probably want to do something in sports, right? A rugby player or something. A rugby player. If yeah. you're not a footballer, you'll be a rugby player. Yeah. Okay, oh, I change that. Can? I'll be a table tennis player. <laughs> table tennis player. Yeah. Are you are you a good table tennis player? Yeah, I actually played for sports school in year one. Okay. Yeah, But yeah, you got in for football one. or you got in? Yeah, I got in for football. Oh, and you played uh, yeah, table yeah, yeah, tennis yeah. as well. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, the last question. We will not uh, leave you hanging anymore, right? The last question, and this is the most difficult one. All right. And you got to live. You have to. You got to live. You have yeah. to, right? <laughs> Your favorite podcast at the moment. Uh, <laughs> the Silver Fox Hustle podcast. How about you, Joe? Exactly the same. Well done, my friends. <laughs> Now, before we go, uh, Raihan and Joe, uh, what do you have to say to guys uh, or the youngsters out? Uh, who look up to you, you know, especially with uh, Raihan being called up and Joe being a, a, a technically brilliant footballer, right? Who wants to make it big in the SPL? Uh, what what do you say to them, uh, Joe? Let's go. Let's start with you. Well, you just say keep chasing your dreams, keep working yeah. hard, yeah. and eventually things will fall into place if you keep going at it. And yeah, yeah just have faith in yourself and yeah. have faith in your abilities. Yeah. Raihan, yeah, I think it's quite cliche, but you know, hard work. You know, uh, at the end of the day, it's cliche because everybody says it because it's true. So hard work, and also don't be afraid to like message coaches. Yeah, it's like important, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah believe in yourself and hard work, and yeah. uh, don't be afraid to like knock on doors and try and get what you want. It's 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 a wonderful way to finish the podcast because yeah I I think you're very right you talk about cliches right uh, hard work mm. uh, th- this is my advice to any any youngster starting out right work hard you got to work hard it's simple as that there's no hard uh, there's no uh, like uh, yeah there's no shortcuts there's no yeah. freaking short shortcuts and number two I think uh, keep your feet firmly on the ground right. you know be humble as as always because especially starting out right you 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 yeah you 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 got your call up you you are going to get your call up or whatever it is right that start it's always easier but to stay there and to maintain mm-hmm. that that position up there and to even progress up mm-hmm. further i think that's even harder and and that's the only advice i can give you personally right so to uh, for to the both of you uh, good luck uh, raihan for your future uh, 
a couple of weeks, a very big, big couple of weeks. Okay. And Joel as well, uh, remaining uh, SP, I think you got to go back to Tampines and have fun there as well and, and you know, have, have a good career ahead of you. Uh, in the meantime, please do follow us on the Silver Fox Hustle podcast. This has been episode number 70. Uh, leave a comment as well. Leave a review. Uh, hoping to uh, listen to that. And until the next episode, the hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. Cheers. Cheers.